With the completion of the Transcontinental Railway in 1914, there was a land rush. The Burns Lake Band was forced onto reserve lands in 1915, but lost a third of their allocation when the Burns Lake town site was surveyed the following year. When I first moved to Burns Lake, I had an instinctive gut feeling that there was something not quite right here. Really, Burns Lake was stuck um, in the 40s. We were forced to watch them burn that feast hall down. Indian and Northern Affairs Canada and the village of Burns Lake burnt it down. At that time, it bothered me. It really bothered me. It bothered me so much that I broke all the windows in the church. Uh, four years later, thousands of dollars of stained glass windows. It was, I thought it was a fair trade. We have seen the, our base of allocated reserve land go from almost 400 acres and slowly, like, we've been forced onto about 15 acres by the lake, you know, and it's all swampland. By the 1990s, changes in federal legislation had made it possible for bands to tax businesses operating on their land. When the Burns Lake Band decided to exercise these powers to tax the mill, the village faced a crisis, the loss of $400,000 of annual tax revenue. The band offered to share the revenue, but the village decided that the way to make up for the revenue loss was to charge the Burns Lake Band a $400,000 annual fee to provide water, sewer and fire services to 20 houses on their reservation. The conflict ended up in the Supreme Court. The court assessed the money owed by the band for these services at $8,000 per year, not $400,000. The village, though, continued to insist on their original amount. Uh, there was a big wall uh, put up between, and, and it's still there, between the band uh, houses uh, and the village. And that became sort of the wall of shame. And Rob Charlie in particular uh, decided one afternoon to use the wall as a means of getting out his message. Eventually there was a uh, 60s style protest march down through the middle of town uh, on Highway 16. The Department of Indian Affairs brought in a mediator and within days the two sides came to an agreement, not only on the service fee but also, finally, to open a dialogue. The band did win and it won in the ways that counted. Uh, it brought the community together. Uh, the message that the band had been treated unjustly for years came through loud and clear. So the challenges are dialogue, definition, sustainability, and money. Real, tangible, shared partnership. Partnership is not tokenism. It's not a meeting because you want to say that they were there. Partnership is real shared opportunity, shared control, shared resources.